I said it's going one and zero, and we just kept going one and zero. One and zero means focus on the next play, not the play before. So we just kept going and focusing on that. And then Coach DeBoer preaches to us, keep playing, and the game will come back to you. And we played hard from the jump. We just weren't executing to where we needed to, and we kept playing, and the game finally came back to us. You got some big holes there on those runs there at the end, those three touchdown runs. Just kind of talk about the O line on those uh, last couple of touchdowns. Um. A, a few holes opened up? Yeah, like, you know, jam. Oh, okay. I thought guns. you said a few holes. I was yeah. about to say. No, no, no. <laughs> you opened up some holes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, that's how we That's how we play every play. That's how we attack every play. We just learned some things that they were doing schematically. We made some adjustments on the sideline. That's what allowed for those holes to open up. And then we also just made a decision like, look, we're letting this team down as a unit. We need to fix it. And I feel like we came together great as a group and said, we're going to fix it. We're going to right our wrongs right now. CJ Dupree kind of talked a little bit about Bama beating Bama in that game. Is, is that kind of the feeling coming out of that? Is a lot of the times, like, when you guys are struggling, you're just beating yourself? Oh, for sure. You could look back at that game and see we was we had two touchdowns called back for um, holding, and then we had them about 200 yards of penalties at 100 yards equals a touchdown. So those four touchdowns that we left on the board. So we were just definitely beating ourselves. And I'm glad we went through this adversity so we know how to learn from it in the future. When how did frustrating you... was it, you know, you guys wanted to write this sloppy game from last year and then you're playing the same opponent. You weren't able to do that until late. How, first of all, like how frustrating was that during the moment of maybe not being able to break through the way that you guys played? I mean, first of all, it's frustrating to not perform at your best ability. When no, no matter who we were playing, we could be playing Georgia or the Dallas Cowboys. We always want to perform to the best of our ability. So it really wasn't about USF, it was just us not playing to the Bama standard. So we just had to ride our wrongs in the fourth quarter, which we definitely did. And most importantly, as an offense, and I just want to shout out the defense. Um, shout out to Tim Keenan. He just got defensive lineman of the week, and they really kept us in that game. So shout out to them. I'm very excited to see how they continue to grow and progress. But big shout out to those guys. Speaking of Tim, you're a lot of times getting matched up against him uh, in practice as, as a guard. Just uh, what, how much of a handful is he as a side in the athletic? Oh, TK, he, he, has that, he has a side in the, his athleticism. That's something that he doesn't get credit for a lot. Like he, the way his body moves, the, his, his quickness, his agility, it's very surprising for somebody in his frame. And it, it'll really catch you off guard if you're sleeping on him. But I could see him every day. So we just get better. And a great thing about TK and I, and, and Tim Smith as well, like we all have a great relationship. So after practice, Coach DeBoer implemented Shake It Up. So I think you'll dap your teammates up. And Tim, Tim, Tim and I will talk about um, some things that I did. And I'll talk about some things that they did that, um, that were really good, but also things that they could work on. So we're just getting each other better every day. When did you learn that you were uh, going to be playing left tackle on, on Saturday? Um, I always knew it was a possibility throughout the week, but coaches just let me know the morning of, and I was ready for it. Uh, I played left tackle in high school. Obviously, a lot different playing in front of 100 to 100,000, but <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm a ball player, man. You could put me guard, tackle, center, tight end, receiver, wherever you need me. I'm going to play ball, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. How did the communication on the offensive line change with the shuffling? Um, it just changed with who was talking to who, honestly. Like, just communication was still seamless. Uh, USF does a great job of showing a lot of unique pressures and stunts, so we really had to be very vocal of that. And um, it just changed of who was talking to who. Everybody was still very vocal and communicating really well. Obviously, yeah. JT Latham came down to Florida to play his high school football, but has he, have y'all had any conversations about playing in Wisconsin? Oh, yeah, he actually, <laughs> he's trying to get some of his friends back at home some tickets for the game, so I got to see if I can um, help him out with that. But. Um, that's all we spoke about as far as that goes. How are y'all dealing with the noise up there? I heard some uh, in practice. Well, what's the preparation for the noise level? Uh, we're just preparing for it. Uh, practice, obviously, practicing with crowd noise and just being even more vocal with our teammates. So making sure we're being even louder than we usually are. That's how we're preparing for it. What's been the tone from the coaches this week in meetings and at practice so far? Um, elevate. The word of the week is elevate to play to our standard, elevate to our standard, and not drop to the level of our opponent, no matter who we're playing. What's Coach Cap like after a game when there's all those penalties? What is he like to be um, He's really just, he's really focused on correcting it. He's not a guy that's going to repeat, like, oh my gosh, you're horrible. Like, but he's going to be like, hey, this is why we have to practice harder. This is why we have to do better in practice. That's a great thing about Coach Cap. It's, it's a lot easier to learn from him. You talked a little about Wilkin yesterday. Is, what's your, been your message to him this week, and how is he doing? Flush it and move on. It's nothing he could do about it. It's nothing he could do about Saturday today. What he can work on what he can't control is how he performs on this coming Saturday. So that's what I'm telling him to focus on. What did you think of the way that Pritchett came in late and kind of gave you guys a boost? Um, I'm very proud of Pritchett for coming in late and giving us a boost. Like you said, he's um, 
he's a guy that's really grown along fall camp and even at the beginning of the season. Uh, stepped in last week when we needed him when um, Caden went down. So very proud of him and the way he's been able to respond to it, some adversity. How do you see guys like him and, and Caden kind of be like itching to get on the field when they're dealing with injuries? How hard is that for them? Yeah, I'm, it's really hard, and I know what it's like firsthand because last year USF I couldn't play. So, but they've been, uh, they've also been really good about um, really helping their teammates. So when they knew I was playing left tackle throughout the week when we when I was practicing, that both of those guys helped me a lot with giving me feedback, tips, tricks, things to look for. So those guys helped me a lot this week. You kind of mentioned it before, but just what did it feel like being out there at left tackle? How different was it? Um, it was pretty different because obviously I'm, a, I'm on an island by myself and things look different, honestly. So like, it's like, I, I look straight. I know I got Parker, I, know I got Katie, I know I got Pritchett. Now it's just, I know I got Gino, and then it's just me. I look at the wide receivers. It's just a lot of other things that I have to look at. So usually I'll just be in a box. Maybe I'll, and I'll look at the safety if they're rolling down, but at tackle, getting in my stance, okay, I got to look in the box and then I got to look at the safety, see if he's rolling down. Now I got to look at the corner too, see if we get in the corner cat. So there's a lot more to look at, but it, it's a lot of fun, man. I like I like playing puzzles and pass protection is like a puzzle for me. So. Thanks, what did you learn from the offensive line you know, as a whole after last week's game? Um, the resilience of the group. Uh, we didn't come out and perform the way we needed to by any means, but I'm really proud of the way we finished. Um, can you talk about just how, um, you know, Will Conforming, he was, you know, a lot of people have been dogging on him, but, uh, um, and, and things of that nature. Can you just talk about how you guys been able just to build him up? Because, you know, he, y'all gonna need him at some point again. So just talk about just how, how you've been able to just keep his head and uh, just continue just to encourage and motivate him after, you know, he didn't have his best performance, but you know, still gonna need him later down the line. So yeah, first and foremost, I told him not to look, not to even look at social media because nobody really knows what's going on. Don't if it's not coming from somebody within this building, don't even pay attention to it because everybody in this building has your, has your best interest in mind. So everybody on social media, they don't they don't matter. They don't matter. So don't even look at it. So and then as far as just lifting lifting him up, just make sure he learns from it and understands that he's nothing. He could, there's nothing he could do about last week, but he can control how he pre prepares this week to perform a lot better this coming weekend. And another question, just how does the uh, offense, just the team in general, just prepare for, uh, you know, y'all going on your first road trip, uh, first road test, uh, going to Wisconsin in an environment like that, how did, and at a, with an 11 a.m. Uh, kickoff, how does the uh, just team overall just prepare and things of that nature? So as you mentioned the 11 a.m. kickoff, I feel like we're going to be even better prepared than we were last year just for the fact that we're a morning practice team now. So guys are already used to being up early. Guys are used to eating early. And that's a big battle that you have with playing 11 o'clock games. But as far as going on the road, we've been preparing with crowd noise and just making sure that we're even more vocal, um, just really passing the calls along the line. So we're just really preparing for the crowd noise. And we understand that we're going to have to play early. So we just have to keep the same routine that we've been having since we implemented the morning practice. How much comfort did you have with Gino next to you uh, play, play, playing left, left guard? I had a lot of comfort with Gino. Gino and I have a really good relationship, two Northeast guys. Gino and I actually played, played against each other in the state championship my freshman year, his sophomore year of high school. So we talk about a lot of things like that. We talk about a lot of Jersey stuff, Jersey people. So he and I have a great relationship and just, um, he's a great guy, he's a great football player. He's very communicative during the game and we are able to help each other out. How hard is it or what makes it unique to be able to back up both guard positions and the center position? It's, it's, yep. it's pretty tough because you gotta, you gotta know both sides and um, you gotta know both sides. And I feel like the hardest part is being able to be like, okay, somebody helmets come off, I gotta go to center too. So Gino is a very well-rounded offensive lineman. I'm excited to see how he grows through the season. Parker get a smaller helmet this week. I don't know. I told him we need to put Velcro on his chin so his helmet will stop popping off or something. But we, we'll, a few times. yeah, we'll figure it out though. All right, thanks. I have a good one.